D-Lab presents the restoration of a vintage Johnson Ranger 2 AM CW ham band transmitter. Here we go. Terrier D-Lab, we have part three of the Ranger 2 restoration. I've checked out the transmitter. The VFO is perfect. No drift. New caps are installed. Now it's time to put that front panel back on. Before I do though, I have some uh, hot soapy water that I'm going to wipe down this front panel with and get all that grunge off of it. I try not to use like Windex because it can damage the paint and also affect the silk screening. So just some good hot water does the trick. Then I'm going to lube up all the shafts where they go through this panel and we'll clean the switches and then I'm going to put this front panel back on. At that point I'll check the tubes and we'll start testing the transmitter and see if everything's working as it should. So stay tuned. Alright so the front panel's clean and after you clean these you'll see that they kind of have a flat appearance some of the sheen goes away. So I take this new finish this nice automotive polish. This stuff's really nice. It's nice and pliable and it works great on these front panels. Okay. Don't be afraid of it. It's just like waxing your car. And this thing will look like a million bucks when it's done. So while that wax is drying on the front panel, I'm going to reinstall the VFO cover. One thing I want to point out is, you see these little tuning adjustments? They are for calibrating the VFO. They go down to these little variable caps. What happens, and it's very common, is they fall out. And it usually falls out when somebody has lifted the cage and they want to put it back on. These things dislodge and they're tumbling around inside your VFO, shorting things out. Not a good scene. All right. So what I do is I glue these in place. I just put a little dab of adhesive on there so that when I go to put this thing back on, they won't fall and cause you a bunch of trouble. So as you're lowering the cover down onto the VFO assembly, watch these rods. And make sure that those springs are dropping into the slots on the capacitors okay you can just like slightly turn these and you can feel if they're engaged all right and that'll make this thing a whole lot easier to put together and reduce the chances of knocking those springs out of these shafts so as before you tip the ranger up on his back all right this will allow you easy access to those mounting nuts okay so you can get in there of course, a lot of them are buried, and they are kind of difficult to get to, so you have to be patient. After I get that installed, then the vernier is going to go back where he was, and what's really cool about it is Johnson gave you this convenient hole to get your screwdriver up to that vernier to tighten him in place. So the Ranger is back together, and I'm getting ready to give her a test. It's set up right now into a dummy load and we're monitoring on an old Radio Shack DX150B receiver, which is actually a great receiver after it warms up and becomes stable. So what I'm gonna do first is we'll put it on CW. We'll see what kind of power out we're getting. If you recall, in part one, I was only getting about 20 watts out of the Ranger. So we'll do it in CW, then we'll switch over to phone, and we'll listen to the audio on the realistic receiver. Here we go. Alright, I killed the shop lights in case we see any smoke or arcing and sparking. Should look pretty good on video. So here we are, we're in standby, VFO position. There's no output. We go to CW and key it up. You can see our power. We'll zoom in here a little bit. Looks like we're getting about 55 watts. Let's go up here and take a look at the plate current. That's about 145 mils. There's your grid. So CW-wise, she looks good. Now let's check the spot function. Got the old realistic here. So here's the spot function on the Ranger. Okay, so I have the realistic over here listening. So you be in standby, you turn on your zero, okay? And you should be able to find the frequency on your receiver. And you can go through it and back. Do null. Right there. 
or go beyond it. So as you see, we have no output at this point. That's just the VFO providing a signal for your receiver. Now I've got the Ranger in phone mode, okay? We're at VFO, I'm gonna key it up, and first thing I wanna look at with no audio is modulator current. It was around 55 initially, and I'm sure that that's increased because of the new caps. And it has, it's about 70. So I'm gonna have to adjust that back down I don't like them to run that high, but anyway, getting about uh, 45 watts on the old watt meter. Let's bring up some audio now. There we are. Going to get some feedback there through the realistic because we're so close, but you can hear it. Sounds good. The old modulation meter going crazy. So I'm going to call that a wrap for the Ranger 2 restoration from the ground up as you got to see. She came from 25 years of storage and now she's ready to go for maybe another 50 years of service. It looks great, it's performing great. I hope this video is of value to you and if you have any questions about your Ranger, shoot me an email. See you again.